Hi, everybody. It's Jonah Pallone, and welcome to Owner Operated. I want to bring you with me on my journey into the world of small business. Listen, when I was growing up, my parents supported me no matter what career path I chose to pursue. But most people just told me to follow the normal path and get a job at a big company with quote unquote job security and benefits. I started down a path pursuing business and I went to UNC Keenan Flagler for undergrad. It was great, but almost everything I was taught in the business school centered around big business and startups. And during college, I was fortunate enough to land a position where I get to be around small business owners every day. I get to see their books, how they make tough decisions every day. I know a lot more about these small business owners than some of their spouses even. And with Owner Operated, I want to let you in behind the curtain a little bit as to the conversations I've been having with these business owners. I think you'd be a little bit surprised. Listen, my entire life, I've heard people give business owners a bad rap. They would say, you know, they're greedy. They don't care about their employees or they're just in it for the money. Since I've gotten involved with working with small business owners at Midstreet and helping them sell their companies, I've learned that often the exact opposite is true. Small business owners are typically the most giving and supportive people I'm around. So I'm on a mission to get the word out that small business ownership is a good thing. I'm going to share the good, but also the bad and the ugly. You know, we're going to get into the emotions, a lot of hard work that these business owners put into their business, the blood, sweat, and tears, and just what makes these businesses so special, the people behind them. And again, guys, my name is Jonah Pallone. I work at a business called Midstreet Mergers and Acquisitions in Raleigh, North Carolina, with a core team of four folks who I consider family. So thank you so much for listening and enjoy this episode of the Owner Operated Podcast. Today's guest is Bill Edwards, co-founder and owner of Triangle Shooting Academy in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're also joined on the podcast today with Eric Sullivan of Midstreet Mergers and Acquisitions, my colleague and close friend. Super happy to have Eric on today. Eric, thanks so much for being on the show. Hey, happy to be here, Jonah. Thanks for having me. So I'm super excited to share this with the audience. Any comments you got before we get rolling here? You know, Bill is just one of those guys who has always done what he feels is the most interesting thing to do. He he, he didn't do anything because he wanted to make money. He didn't do anything because somebody told him it was the right thing to do. He did it because he had a genuine interest in it throughout his whole life. And I, I think that's probably one of the coolest and most compelling things about him. Bill started the business in 2010 along with his partner, Jeff, and they've grown the business into North Carolina's premier destination for all things firearms. Now, I know this is going to be a controversial episode, but we focused on the business and his journey within the business. So even if you're not into firearms, I would encourage you to listen. There are a lot of lessons you can take away from this. With a 40,000 plus square foot facility, Triangle Shooting Academy has a retail store, self-defense instruction, and even an on-site cafe. We did record, just so you guys know we did record the show at the facility and there isn't too much noise in the background as I was editing it but if you do hear some pops that's from the range nearby Bill and I talked about his journey from a 30-year career in real estate to owning one of the most successful full-service firearm businesses in the southeast like many owners I've spoken with Bill and Jeff went out to start this business off of a leap of faith We talk about what it took for Bill and Jeff to go out on their own and make that decision to start their own business, the power of having a peer group in the same industry from around the country, what's next for Triangle Shooting Academy, and so much more. Can't wait for you to listen in and enjoy. So what what are some of those skills that you took from those 30 years that you brought into Triangle Shooting Academy? There must be a ton of learnings from that experience. Well, you know, when you're talking to someone, you have to look them in the eye and be honest, and you have to, you know, engage them and um, answer the questions that they're asking and be honest with them, and you don't take any shortcuts. And uh, so in, in this business, just buying this piece of property, for example, uh, this piece of property was never on the market, and um, I saw... Bobby uh, Turner sitting on the front porch here and I stopped to talk to him every time I came out this way to say hi and um, he just didn't want to sell he's an, he was an older fellow he's a, he's an invalid and he'd had a stroke and uh, he would get on his tractor and mow the grass and uh, you know um, um, I said Bobby anytime you want to sell just let me know and one day he called me and he said, Bill, I'm ready to sell this piece of property because he, w- he would get on the tractor and when it was 95 degrees, he'd be out here sweating bullets and be mowing the grass. And uh, so, so one day uh, he agreed to sell it to me. I came out here to get the contract signed. He signed the contract and I'm still sitting here talking to him. 
And this other real estate agent came out here. I don't know if you heard the story or not, but this other real estate agent came up here and said, Bobby, um, I'm ready to, to, sell you, uh, to buy this property. And he said, you are? He says, yeah, I'm willing to give you a million dollars for it. And he said, well, you're too late. This guy right here has already bought it. And you can see the records on it. He sold it to us for $600,000. Wow. And so Bobby was straight up honest and not a problem. And he's our member number one. Um, he cut the ribbon when we, uh, when we uh, opened the place. And, and he comes out here all the time. One of the things about it was we pay him a monthly stipend. Um, he, he said I can, uh, he, he wanted to be able to always come out here and feed the geese, mm. which he does. Um, he has a girlfriend that he dated in high school that uh, her, her uh, husband passed away a couple of years ago. So now he's dating her, which he dated in high school. And so they come out here in the car every now and then. So he's still a, a factor. And, and, and for anybody listening, there's a really good podcast. I think it's called the Triangle uh, Podcast that Bill did a, a session on. I'll link to it in the show notes um, for like background on the business. They did a really good job. Mm -hmm. But for, for this podcast, it's called Owner Operated. Mm -hmm. And really what we're trying to do is sort of demystify small business ownership. So you own this sort of this legendary company. My first question, I with guess, with a partner, you, I do have a partner, partner with Jeff, yeah. and, and we're going to get into that too. I, I guess I'm curious about how you think you're perceived in the community. Well, we're a part of the community, and uh, we do give back. Um, uh, first of all, you know, when, when we built this business, um, we wanted to be a part of the community. And um, let me go back to North Raleigh Guns. You know, I, I started that business um, uh, by myself uh, when, when, the, uh, when the real estate business slowed down a bunch back in 2008. I wanted to find something to do. And so I started this in 2010 uh, by myself as a small little business. Uh, uh, off of uh, Westgate Road it was in a 475 square foot business. And uh, two years later, I moved to a, the other side of the building and it was a thousand square feet. And uh, everybody said, let's open a range. Why don't you open a range? And I said, I have no interest at all. I'm a uh, you know, one person guy. I want to walk, do one on one business. You know, I want to work with one-on-one, -on -one, just like I did in the real estate business, just like I did when I was a manufacturer's rep. I would walk in and talk to the owner. I'd sell them product, and then I'd be done. And uh, so I wasn't interested in anything big, a big organization. It's just not who I am. And um, uh, on a whim, I decided to go to the NSSF uh, conference in St. Louis about ranges and it was uh, it was a sold out conference and so I, I said well I'm just going to go and I called him up and said certainly there's another spot left and said no this is a very much in demand thing this is in July of 2012 and they said you'll never get in and I said well okay I decided to go anyhow I went ahead and got on the airplane I went out there one person didn't show up. They said, you're lucky. I paid them the $450. I went to the conference. I got in. I heard people talk about how great the range business was. And I said, okay, this sounds pretty cool. What made you think that was going to happen? I mean, what I, made you think that you could jump, jump on an airplane you and know, just, my, it was going to work out? My father was one of the smartest people that I've ever known. He was a physicist. He was president of a company. He knew Albert Einstein. Wow. And 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 he always said he'd rather be lucky than smart any day. I've been very lucky, I'll admit it. But I always take the chance. I was gonna say I never stop, I always go forward. So I decided to go. And and I met a lot of people there at the range conference, and I still know them to this day. I still keep up with them. So I went to that range conference and I came back and said, I gotta find somebody to do this because I'm not doing it alone. I got to find somebody who knows a lot more than I do about management. And turned out that the guy that was doing my payroll processing for North Raleigh Guns um, and, and Jeff Corfo, I, I tracked him down immediately. And he, he, it turned out he was interested in doing a range. He knew that I did not want to do one because I had stated that many times, but he was my payroll processor. Right. And he said, 
yes, he wanted to do a range, but no, he did not want a partner. And I said, come on, Jeff, let's think about this. I said, I really want to do a big one, you know, a country club, something that's more like a department store. There's a lot of money in it. And he said, well, he didn't want to do a big one. I said, well, let's think about this. He said he wanted to do one in the same area that I want to do one. Let's not compete, Jeff. Let's really do this. So we did what we call speed dating. We met in my real estate office, and he finally agreed. I convinced him of it. And Why did he agree? What, what set him over? You know, I convinced him of it, and I, that's all I can tell you, and I think he'll tell you the same thing. And, uh, just made sense. Well, yeah. And I don't want to run it. I'm not running it right now. I mean, I come in every day. I've got ideas and I run it all, you know, run it up the flagpole, see if he likes it. If he doesn't like it, you know, we don't do it. And the same thing, if, if I have an idea, we don't do it. And if he has an idea and I don't like it, we don't do it. But the day-to-day operations are his. I mean, he is the day-to-day operator of this business. And uh, uh, you guys have been partners for about a decade at this yeah, point. Yeah, almost. I mean, we, 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 we were talking since 2012 when I got back in 2012. So in 22, we'll be 10 years. So, I mean, in that time, you must have, you know, it's partnerships. They say partnerships are like a marriage, right? I mean, you have your wife and then you, we you have We had plenty Jeff. of arguments when we got started and we got this thing going. We haven't had an argument in nine years. Because uh, why do you think that is? Well, we just mesh, you and know, you have, and you have separate roles, right? We do. We do. I mean, he he has run big businesses. He was head of uh, Icon. Um, he used to work for Kodak. He's had 400 people reporting to him. And that's perfect. I mean, we right now have about 70 people. I'm not a manager when it comes to that. That's not my role. My role is to come up with ideas, come up with different ways to do things, look at new products. I go to always go to these uh, conferences, the National Shooting Sports Range conferences. Um, you know, just come up with new ways to do things. And if he likes them, fine. If he doesn't, that's fine. I'll put my foot down when I need to, and he'll put his down when he needs to. At the end of the day, we know we have to agree with each other. We have to because we have a big business here that's growing, and we've got a long ways to go. I'm over 70 now, and he's 65, and uh, so he's, he's, he'll be 65 in December, I think it is, and uh, so we've got, you know, and he's got some young kids. My kids are grown, so we, ha- we look at it a little differently. I got a new boat that I've got on order, and it'll be here. It's coming from China. I'd better hurry up and get here, but it's been <laughs> slow getting here. I'm a boater. Yeah. I got a place down at the beach. He's got a place up at the lake. So we look at things a little differently. What kind of boating do you like to do? Are you into fishing, or is it really just the boat lifestyle? No, I've had big boats, 50-footers. Okay. And uh, this one's a little bit smaller. It's a 36-footer, okay. and it's a catamaran with two outboards, and it's got a foil on it, so it kind of lifts out of the water. Beautiful. And uh, and it's, it's uh, something new, so I'm excited about getting it. This show is brought to you by Midstreet Mergers and Acquisitions, a family business and business intermediary based out of Raleigh, North Carolina, that specializes in selling businesses generating $1 to $25 million in revenue in the Southeast. If you own a business and are considering an exit or know someone who is, check out their website and contact them at midstreet.com. That's M-I-D street.com. Well, let me back up. I, I want to ask you a question about, you, you know, you and your partner split your roles up a little mm-hmm. bit. And you said yourself that management wasn't a strong point for you. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, when they get into business or when they're thinking about getting into business, they feel like they've got to do everything. They've right, got to be the right. best at everything. And so was there ever a time for you when you were getting started or earlier on in your career where you maybe didn't know that management wasn't your strong point and you tried to do it? And, and how did you make that transition, if so? Or did you always know that about yourself? Well, I think in the back of my mind, I think I could manage if I needed to. I would do it. If I had to do it, I would do it. If Jeff popped off, I'd do it. It's not what I want to do. Mm. And and, uh, um, I'm just not interested in doing it. That's the the answer I have for you. Um, I'd rather do anything but manage. You strike me as the kind of person that if you're not interested in it, you're not doing it. I'm not doing it. Exactly. I don't want to do it. It's not my thing. If I had to do it, 
I'd do it, but I'd find somebody else to do it. That's what I would do. Yep. So um, that's the best answer I can give you. And, and that's probably informed a lot of the reasons that you've gotten into the careers and into the businesses that you've gotten into. It's, mm-hmm. it's just pure interest, it right. sounds like. Oh, no. I, I was very interested in the real estate business. I'm not interested in getting back in it. Uh, I was very interested in being a manufacturer's rep. I'm not interested in doing that anymore. Uh, I love golf. I have a back problem. I can't get back into it. I, I loved it. I, in my mind, I'm a perfect golfer right now, but I can't swing a club. <laughs> but I think I could do it. But you know the fundamentals really I, well. I know it perfectly. That's I right. watched all the Masters and everything. I've been to the Masters a bunch of times. Yeah. I have a friend of mine that actually runs the Masters, wow. and, and he got me there many, many times, and uh, I love it, but I can't do it anymore. So yeah, I guess circling back to what the podcast is about, right, one of the things that I'm on a mission to do is to share with everybody that small business ownership is a good thing, mm-hmm. and that's something that you embody, heart and soul. So but for someone looking at you and looking at what you've built with Triangle Shooting Academy, that's that's sort of in that judgmental stage, which we which I've experienced a lot going to college, et cetera. They say, oh, you know, that person, you know, he sits in the big house. He's got this crazy big business now, super successful, thousands of people coming in, selling thousands of, of, of products. But you weren't, this is chapter 20 for you. You started at chapter one. So what was that like when you were building the business for the first time, you know, with Jeff? And j- there must have been so many learning processes that you went through. Just give me some of those stories that, that you went through in the beginning. Well, I love business. You know, I went to school, very small college. Well, let me even back up more when I was a kid in, in, in elementary school. I mean, I, I sold newspapers. When I, was in, when I was in Vermont, I sold salve. I sold greeting cards. I did all the little things to make money. I sold newspapers in Pleasantville, New York. When it snowed up there, my brother and I took my, our tractor and we killed it shoveling driveways. We killed it. We had $5 driveways. We had $10 driveways. And, and we would go up and down and we'd make, we'd make three dollars $400, you know, for kids that are at that point in time 10 years old, 12 years old. Um, we worked um, when we were in Vermont, 10 years old. We, we worked at the farm, and we would be baling hay for the farmers. And I can remember we worked all summer long. We got $35. And uh, we just loved working. And so, you know, it, it, it was just a work ethic. You know, we always wanted to work. And my Where brother, did that come from? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but, it, you know, do you, did, were your parents that way? I mean, what was, well, you what know, was I don't know. My father worked hard my father was actually president of three companies companies at one time wow and um um you know he would go off to work in the morning we didn't know what he did you know um you know he was he was a smart guy like i said i mean i guess it was just the genes um and and my brother tommy worked hard uh there's five of us in the family my sister worked hard um everybody's retired right now except for me and um um, I don't know. I, I really don't know the answer to it. I guess it's just the way we were brought up. Uh, we weren't forced to do anything. We were, we were disciplined very hard. You know, we got the, the spankings. Um, you know, we, we, we had, a, had a normal family. You know, I can't tell you anything unusual. You know, we went to schools. We didn't go to private schools. We were in the public schools. We all were able to go to college. You know, the family paid for it. We didn't have any any debt back then. It, we were very middle class. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't anything that unusual there. Um, well, I think that's one of our favorite misconceptions to tackle, too, is that, you know, business owners today, they, they come from families where somebody, you know, gave them a, a leg up of sorts. No, right? it wasn't and, a leg up. I didn't get... I asked my father for a down payment on my house, on our house, and he said, "Go jump at a lake." <laughs> you, know, you know, there wasn't any any gifting of money. Our, our colleges were paid for. You know, we had to ask for money for you know, you know, those wasn't any big money gifts or anything. Like that. I think I got twenty bucks a week when I was in college. So, give me some of those stories from the beginning of starting the business. Back when I went to, to when when I started North Raleigh Guns, it was a very interesting business because. Uh, I got into it because a friend down in um, at Surf City Guns 
got me into it. He said, this is what you need to do. You, you, need, you need to order 10 times what you want because you're only going to get a fraction of what you order. So I would order two or three million dollars of what I would, what I, uh, what I needed, and I'd only get like 10 percent of it. And they would call you from the factories and say, "I'm getting ready to ship this stuff. How much do you really need?" It was crazy. Wow. And see now, of course, now it's almost like that. But b- during the Trump slump. If you ordered, you know, five hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff, you'd get five hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff, and they wouldn't call you. But back in two thousand ten, eleven, and twelve, you would actually get whatever you you wouldn't get what you ordered. And then we went through the Trump slum, and that that was when everything was available. Now we're back to the na- same old stuff. You can order everything you want, and you're not going to get everything. So it's changed, and uh, it's a crazy business. And, for example, Andrew Barnes was in here the other day, Barnes Precision Products. He's over in Apex. He makes a high-end AR. He brought two over. And I said, Andrew, when is this going to change? He says, I don't know. I said, I'm selling parts to uh, Benelli. And he said, they're 11 months behind right now. And he said, uh, everything's all backed up. And, uh, you know, we don't know when it's going to change. With the current administration, it may be years before it changes. As you know, all the bullet manufacturers are way behind. Remington has started ma- making bullets again recently. Hopefully that'll help. There's been three increases in prices for the uh, bullet manufacturers in the last three months. And, uh, you know, we're buying from Italy, we're buying from uh, Yugoslavia and uh, um, in Europe right now and their prices they're sending it over in container loads they're making a ton of money they're selling us you know nine millimeter ammo for 60 cents a round and we're wow. used to paying like 15 cents a round goodness so it's absolutely nuts so I don't know when it's going to change um, but when you were when you were starting with with Jeff how did you guys, did you know from, you knew from the get-go that he was going to run the business operations day to day? Yeah. Well, he, he was working for prime pay and he had, he had to be very careful because he worked here, but he never worked eight to five. He, he was not going to work during those hours because of his contract with prime pay. And so he worked after hours here. And uh, it worked out fine for him. He's now totally disconnected with Prime Pay, and he's he's been paid off, and he's totally done with Prime Pay. And of course, he has two young kids, so he, he has to spend time with them. But he's here a lot of the time, most of the time he's here, and uh, so he's got a good grasp of the business. He, he's got we got managers, we've got a, a, a hierarchy, if you will. And uh, he does great with that. And we have a manager's meeting in here every Wednesday from uh, 10 to 11 or 10 to 12, actually, I think it is. But when he was starting and he had that separate job, I mean, how are you building the business? What are some of those? Did you, you had North Raleigh gun. And when you talked with him, you said, all right, let's go into business together. Walk me through some of the stages of, so you bought this property. Well, I was here most of the time and I had the knowledge of the, putting the business together and the range knowledge and the firearms knowledge. I'm not a gun nut. I'm a business nut. To be honest, Jeff is more of a gun nut than I am. And I had a more, I will, I think he'll agree with this. I had more of a grasp of the firearms business. You can access previous episodes of Owner Operated and sign up for my free weekly newsletter where I summarize topics from each episode and send them straight to your inbox at jonahpalone.com in the show notes. That's jonahpalone.com. And if you like the show, please leave a review and tell a friend to help more people find Owner Operated. Back to the episode. One of the um, one of the elephants in the room, I think, is sort of this political environment in today. And you own a gun sh- gun store, gun range, you know, sort of the the full service well, gun facility in the triangle. Well, um, Obama was the uh, gun seller of the 
you know, of, of the period, and now uh, uh, Biden is, you know, and uh, he's good for business. And to be honest with you, there's some things that he that he's doing that we like, you know, and um, it is what it is. We like strong background checks. Um, we like that uh, training is a big thing of his, you know, and we'll just deal with whatever comes up. Do you, I mean, do you have any stories or any, anytime somebody's, you know, come to you and just kind of a, had a wild mis, misconception of kind of who well, you guys are and what you do? And you We've know. had liberals come in here and say, I've never had a gun before, but I'm getting one now. Interesting. And, and we've had some of our, um, our, our range safety officers said, with this Chauvin trial going on, we better get ready because they may be outside of our door. Mm. Seriously, yeah. that we need, we may need to beef up security. Right. Well, we Jeff and I looked at each other. Are you kidding me? I mean, your clientele is extremely diverse. I, well, I would, we're not going to have to worry about it. Everybody in this and here carries a gun. <laughs> Why a would anybody want to come here? First of all, we're isolated. Now, we've had, when we opened up this store, we thought we'd have protesters. None. Nobody protested. Nobody picketed. None. No emails, no letters, nothing. We're isolated, first of all. Yeah. We're on a dead-end road. There's nobody who can drive by and expect to keep going. Um, we've, we've been robbed twice. Wow. And uh, we've, we've, so we've figured out what our weaknesses were. We fixed that. And um, no one's been hurt. We haven't had any suicides because that's a big problem with ranges. One of the reasons why we haven't is because we have rain, two range safety officers in each bay. It's a com, common fact that ranges typically will have a suicide every 18 months. And we've been in business five years. And again, we hope we never do, but we are very, we've been trained by psychiatrists how to, how to look for that. And uh, God bless, we, have, we don't want to ever have one. I, we hate to even talk about it, but it's a fact. And um, so we're very much, we, we know how to look for that, and we know how to listen to people and talk to people, say, hey, how you doing? How's your day going? What's happening? We think we've stopped four suicides. Wow. Um, because, because of the way we look at people and talk to them. And do you, does part of you think if I wasn't here, they would be at some other range and maybe they would have gone through with it? Possible. Yeah. It's possible. We don't know, but all we can tell you is what we think so well, you've put together a really professional operation here you know i've been to plenty of gun ranges you've been i mean you've done a very good job of that and i think a, a big piece of it is you know you you probably you seem to just love business what is your perspective on how the business impacts the broader community i mean where do you see yourself as a, an important part of the community because i i've got a perspective of it where i see a very important function that you guys serve. I'm curious what you what you see. Well, we, we are involved with the community. We, we support the Angus Barn, the Walk for Hope. You know, we contribute to that every year, a significant sum. You know, we, we, we give money to all the charities. We've got a barn built in the back where they've got cats. Our employees bring their dogs in. And uh, so we're, we're kind of animal friendly here. We've got a pond in the back. I went fishing yesterday and caught three bass with my grandson, members only. Yeah, yeah. and that's a throwback. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, we're plugged into the community. We've done blood drives here. Um, we are we can we help the friends of the NRA raise money, and, and that money stays in the community. So we contribute to that as well. Yep, local uh, law enforcement. You guys oh, are a yeah. resource for them. We actually have had the. Uh, uh, the North Raleigh um, area uh, police department in here last week. We're going to help them. They're going to they're going to be here, and they want to put a tent out in front to to help people um, let them know uh, how to protect their vehicles to keep from being robbed of firearms, and also to help them under help people understand how they can carry a firearm in their car. Because that's one of the things when people come in here and they buy, uh, buy a firearm. They, you know, we tell them what we know. But if a, a law enforcement tells them when they can carry a gun, how they can carry a gun, what's the right way and the wrong way, and when you can use a firearm, you know, 
And basically they said, if you think you're going to be uh, in a, a situation where you're threatened with your life, you can respond. But it, it, they need to hear it from a law enforcement instead of from us. Right. You know, do you need to have insurance? You know, there's a lot of people that are, that are getting insurance right now when they conceal carry insurance. And uh, that's a good thing. I mean, you know, you never know. And uh, that's something that everybody should consider having. So, so you do a lot of education, too. I mean, oh. you said yourself, people who are new to gun ownership, they come in. I mean, most of the time, they probably have no, uh, not always, but a lot of the people that come in probably have no We are clue. training 700 people a month. That includes concealed carry. That includes uh, one-on-one training. It includes defensive pistol. We have, like, defensive pistol one, two, and three. We have uh, basic pistol. Yeah. Um, we have people, the very first time they've ever owned a fire, we have people coming in scared to daylights. We, ha- we have a girl, Nancy, who is, who is actually now our number one trainer, a uh, female trainer that came here three years ago totally afraid of firearms. Um, she works for um, uh, SAS, and uh, she was petrified to hold a firearm. Mm-hmm. Now she is a competitive shooter. Wow. And uh, she shoots up the, this IDPA match up in uh, Creedmoor. Uh, they have it every week. And uh, we also have uh, uh, Jessica Hook, Jess Hook, who is number two or number three in the uh, country that lives right here. And she, tr- she worked with us. It's called Pistol Caliber Carbine. And uh, she is awesome. She actually trained with Keanu Reeves. Really? Uh, At Terran yeah. Tactical? Or? Yes, Terran Tactical, John Wick. You know, you've seen him. Absolutely. And, uh, yep. She's trained with him, and she worked here for a while, but she still lives right here and now works for uh, one of those gaming companies. Cool. Of it. But, yeah. So, she's, so somebody who probably would never have been exposed to guns, right? No, Maybe who, no. Who she got, found in, an she got into it on the West Coast, and she, re- she started doing artwork for the guns, yep. and she just decided she loved it, and now she's totally into it she travels on the weekends all over the country doing these events yeah the reason i bring it up is i think you know we're talking about misconceptions in in the business world and i think a lot of people would maybe even just ask you know why why does a, a business like yours exist and they miss all these things that are, are it's, the it's bigger entertainment picture. value and it's a, a it's a safety it's thing a sport. too yeah a sport it's safety and and to be, and it's to be prepared you never know. And the fact of the matter is here in the United States, guns are widespread. There are, there are a lot of guns out there. And so the fact that you guys provide a place for people to practice with them is, I mean, a very big deal. I well, would they say. say it's one of the reasons why Japan never invaded the United States. It's, yeah. It's because there's a lot of people that have <laughs> firearms. An armed citizenry, right? Yeah. yeah. And there's countries around here like uh, Israel that uh, requires everybody to be trained from what I understand. And, uh, do you agree with that? Uh, yes, I do. I mean, if everybody was trained and, uh, I think maybe Norway or one of the other Icelandic countries up there, uh, is, is, is the same way. Yep. Um, I believe everybody should be trained and armed and, uh, safely. So say, say I'm a first time I'm, I'm looking into this. I'm not really sure if I want to own a gun or not. I'm scared of guns. What what's your pitch to me for for getting into it? What would you come recommend? Come in and try it. Just come in and try it. You know, I've had classes with ladies when I had North Raleigh guns, and at the end of the class, I would bring out one of the big caliber pistols, like a 357, and I would say, "You want to try one of these?" And I was just amazed at how the ladies love the big guns. I'm serious. And they would just love firing the big guns. We would train with a 22 with a silencer. And then I'd bring out a 357 Magnum and say, try this. Oh, my gosh. You wouldn't have believed it. Just have a blast. They had a blast with the big guns. So all I can say is try it. Just come try it. You don't have to. If you don't like it, that's fine. But come and try it. And, and uh you don't have to like it, but if you try it, at least you'll know. And uh, it's just like business, you know. I've I've tried a lot of things, and and uh, I've had failures in business. What are some of your biggest ones? I've had failures. Well, 
The ones that I failed in are ones that I didn't control. Um, I invested in a, uh, uh, an Alzheimer's drug company uh, here in Raleigh, and I lost a lot of money in that. Um, I thought it was going to be successful. Uh, and we went to um, the stock exchange, and we're going to ring the bell, but one of the doctors was crazy, and because the night before he wanted a better deal, and he went to the SEC and said, I read the data wrong, and so he, we couldn't go public. So I lost a lot of money on that. Um, there was another one... Um, <laughs> compressed t-shirts this was kind of fun we would compress them down to look like a, a race car and we actually went to uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway somebody else was leading the pack on this I just put money in it and we actually went to the Charlotte Motor Speedway you can't be afraid to take chances okay I'm not afraid of failure right okay uh, and this is these are things where I lost money on investments okay these aren't things that I was con in control. Right. Well, that's the reason I ask you about it is it's, it's, it is about taking chances and you Absolutely. said yourself early on, that's part of the reason you're where you're at is luck, but also you took the chance yes. and a lot of people never take the chance. It's well, a, here's another one. That, this is another one that I was driving and this is, this is a, um, wasn't a business. It was a moving a, uh, museum, a gigantic museum, a tank museum down here from Danville, Virginia. And I was driving it, but the people that own the museum up in Danville changed their mind. And I was going to combine it with the National Guard down here. And I worked on it for about two years. And it's called the Danville Tank Museum. And oh, I, I got the, the guys down here with the National Guard to agree to it. The language that the National Guard proposed after working on it, the Danville people didn't like it, and so they pulled out their support. But you know what? I wasn't embarrassed at all. I said, fine. It didn't work. I tried. And we would have had a gigantic place out there at the airport. We were going to put a hotel out there. We were going to have a track to run the tanks and everything. It would have been beautiful. But I tried. No skin off my back. And, I had, and people don't see this is this is why I think this podcast is so important. Is people don't see those. People don't know about those. They see Triangle Shooting Academy and they see how successful you are, but they didn't see the five other, ten other, twenty other things you tried. Yeah. Well, yeah. But this is my jewel right here, and uh, I'm very, very happy with it. Very successful with it, and uh, I am. You know, it, it's it's very, very beautiful place. And I love it. You know, I'm glad that we did it. And uh, we're still growing rapidly. And we get people all the time wanting to buy us out. I get letters at least once a month. And uh, we're not interested in doing that. I mean, where can you sit and watch airplanes going overhead? And uh, it's a beautiful place. It is. If you could go, and this, you know, again, a, a big part of this is for people who are listening who want to one day be in your shoes, right? One, one day they want to, they, they're interested in business. They, they believe they want to be in business, uh, but they may not know how to get there. And so what would you tell a younger Bill Edwards, you know, let's say, I, I, you know, in your early teens, maybe even your early 20s, what would you go back and tell yourself that may have helped you along the way? Well, uh, you're not going to start out where you want to be at first. You know, you're going to have to grow and you're going to have to try different things. Uh, I started out with tech size and I learned right away that I, I worked very hard and it wasn't the right place. Um, uh, I always wanted to be in sales, and to me, sales are always the right place to be, sales of some kind. I've always been selling my entire life, and, uh, and I've always been straight commission except for the first 18 months that I've been in. So I don't eat unless I sell something. So to me, straight commission is always the way to go, and you can't sit on your laurels and just earn a salary. Um, the harder I work, the more money I made. And uh, to me, that's the way to go. 
We got a couple more questions, Bill, and then yep. we can get out of here. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of curious. What's next for for Triangle? What are you going to do here? What's the next well, thing you're going to build out? As soon as we get over this COVID stuff, we'll get our archery going. We have uh, these pop up targets going right now. We've got a 22 dueling tree that we're going to put out there, and then after that, we're going to we've got a couple more machine guns we're going to put out. A lot of people don't know that you guys offer machine gun. Yeah, rentals. we have we have machine gun rentals. Um, they're, um, you know, the, the ammo prices have slowed them down a little bit, uh, but the nine millimeter, you know, we're working very hard to get the prices down on the nine millimeter. Uh, we're going to push back into events and getting more people here in the in the VIP lounge. Um, we're changing uh, vendors on our uh, restaurant, on our on our uh, cafe or grill, and by the end of this month, we're switching to a new person, a new group, and uh, they'll have a lot of new offerings. And um, they're also a baker, and they also have some online offerings. Um, so it's it's not one big thing, but a lot of little things that we're going to be doing. And again, we want to get through this COVID. Um, we'll be doing some things outside. Um, our, our ladies group is growing rapidly. They're going to have an outdoor function coming up soon. So that the ladies group is up to around 100 now. And we're excited about that. And uh, so it's a lot of little things that are happening. And, and a lot of it is under, you know, under COVID guidelines. So once we get rid of this stuff, it's going to be great. You know, I, you talked about the archery and that sort of thing. You got a lot of, we're, we're sitting in a, a nice, beautiful room right now with big windows behind us and, and out behind us is a, you know, a big green field of open space. You know, I'm curious, what, is there another building going back there? What's the vision for we that have, space? We don't know. You know, we've had all kinds of ideas. Um, expansion of this building. We, we've thought about doing indoor shotgun, we can't do outdoor because we're inside the city limits. Right. Um, you know, we just don't know. We've even thought about building an ammo production plant back there. Interesting. We 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 just got to get through another six months so we have a clear vision of what we can and what we want to do. Right. Um, we've even thought about filling in a pond and building apartments back there. No, but we're not going to do that. You're right. You know, we've got some valuable land here, believe it or not. And we've got room to do different things with it, but uh, we don't know. It's exciting to have a clear canvas. We can do what we want to do. We've, you know, got to prove we, there's no zoning that prevents us. We're in industrial zoning, so we can build more back here. We could add more lanes, but right now, because of the price of ammo, our lane usage is slowed down because not as many people are, are using the lanes. So we got to get our ammo prices down. I guess one more question I have for you, yeah. Bill. Yeah. Um, when you were starting in the business, how did you get the financing to start this operation? Well, um, it's interesting. Um, we, um, w I went to this conference in St. Louis and learned a lot from them. And then we took our banker bankers up to um, Richmond and visited Colonial Shooting Academy up there. We also had a banker down here um, who pulled out at the last minute because through real estate, it turned out there was one of the guys on the board of directors um, didn't like me through real estate. And we ended up going with uh, First Tennessee who uh, they're very firearms friendly and they gave us the loan and we re recently refinanced with them for a very, very attractive uh, rate. But um, we had no problem getting the loan. We had a good uh, business plan. We had it drawn up by a guy down in Wilmington that helped us draw it up. And uh, we, we flew through it with flying colors. We had some help from a, uh, uh, someone from the NSSF, National Shooting Sports Foundation, that gave us some tips on it. And so we had no problem. And that was it. one thing that you've talked about, too, is just the, the power of that sort of advisory peer group. Mm -hmm. Do you still maintain relationships yes. with those guys? Yes. And actually, there, uh, there's a, a small group of five ranges that I'm involved with that uh, 
share information back and forth about best practices. Sort of like a mastermind group, right? Yeah. What's doing well? What are they using? How are they doing this? How are they doing that? And we just have an email chain that uh, we get on and share things with. And would you think, would you consider that to be super helpful over the years? Absolutely. Oh, sure. I mean, there's, when I got in this business, I visited ranges all around the country. Uh, Whatever I traveled, I, I took a trip to Florida and stopped and talked to probably a dozen ranges. I went all the way down to Miami and came up the East Coast and and I still maintain those relationships. Uh, there's a guy in um, Tampa, um, his name is uh, Bing um, Kearney, and he is he has three ranges, and they're probably three of the biggest ranges in the country. And and his his ranges that he has are a tip of the business that he does. He's he's also a, a site developer. And um, he, he's got one that's 85,000 square feet in Orlando, one that's 60,000 square feet in Tampa, and one that's 45,000 square feet at the Villages. And the, the one that's 85,000 square feet, he just opened. And he's, he's doing, he, it's, I have no idea exactly how much he's doing, yeah. but he's probably doing, between the three of them, $15 million a month. And uh, he goes to all the shows. We go out to eat lunch all the time or uh, when we go to shows. Uh, there'll be a SHOT show this year, and we'll be seeing each other then, and we'll compare notes. Would you consider him a mentor to you in some yeah, ways? Yeah, I would. He's definitely a mentor. He, he's got an uh, arcade in there where you put the dimes in it and, and you shoot the, uh, the different things, and he's got that in there. And it's a two-story um, thing. It's right at the intersection of two major interstates, and you can see it when you drive by. It's really a cool place. I, I, I went to see him when it was still under construction, and people were tearing at it and wanting to see him. But when I went up to talk to him, hold on, I'm talking to Bill. I'm showing him the place. You know, So we spent an hour walking through the place. He's a great guy, really is. Got it. I think we wrapped there. Thank you so much, Bill. You got it. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs>